Some three months ago, Guillotine won a buff vote in MCOC. The two-stage voting process had her initially facing five other champions and culminated in her going head-to-head -head with Ant-Man in the buff vote arena. The news of her winning was surprising to some at the time of the vote, especially since Ant-Man had already won the initial vote but by what seemed like a pretty large margin. Ant-Man also had the popularity of the MCU on his side and was widely regarded as the worst kit of the two, and thus more deserving. But in hindsight, Guillotine's win was no surprise. She entered the arena as a clear underdog and the relatively unrewarding arena didn't give much incentive to Ant-Man voters to grind and vote. Ant-Man voters became complacent, Guillotine voters did not. We can go deeper into the details of the voting system and whether the barriers to voting resulted in a skewed outcome, but what's done is done and everybody in the CCP and myself have had the opportunity to play around with the buffed guillotine for the past couple of weeks. And I have very little in terms of good news to share with y'all. In this video I'll be breaking down my thoughts on guillotine's changes with some gameplay featuring her in the background. Timestamps for different sections are available on the video progress bar and in the description. Overall, Guillotine now has a lot more damage if you're running her without any synergies. Her hit count can be deceptively low since her playstyle mostly involves heavies and SP1s, both of which have low hit numbers. She can down Winter Soldier in about 100 hits as a 565 without synergies, which is around two times faster than how she did before the buff. When you bring a full synergy or even a partial synergy team into the comparison though, things get a bit more unclear. In some tests, she even has less overall damage per second and damage per hit when running the full synergy team after the buff. I am, however, not really upset about this. Her main synergy partner happens to be a completely useless champion uh, in Purgatory, so that immediately puts the synergy comparisons in a bit of a negative light. She can also deal pretty decent damage now to bleed immune opponents if at high sig, which is definitely a nice addition to her kit. Uh, this is probably a good time to mention though that her ability to gain souls while inflicting rupture debuffs was bugged on the beta for quite some time while we were testing and it just got fixed so i would not be surprised if the bug actually makes it to the live server as well a truly baffling change has also been made to her sp3 with the removal of the percentage based damage and replacing it with a relatively weak non-stacking degen this change just makes no sense especially since her souls are now capped at 15. Her SP3 is not really a part of her core loop anymore, and it never really was before the buff. But the novelty of her in a way dropping a guillotine on the opponent, execution style will definitely be missed. Her overall output, while better than her synergy-less pre-buff state, is in no way comparable to other top bleed or rupture champions, which could have been fine if she had other attributes to make up for the damage shortcomings. I wasn't expecting her to have Nick Fury's bleed damage as long as the rest of her kit actually did something meaningful and that brings us to... Before the buff, Guillotine's regeneration was random and inconsistent, but definitely nice to have. You used to notice chunks of health getting recovered as you dealt hits to your opponent. Her region after the buff, uh, however, is just truly pathetic which really boggles my mind since the region was actually one of her buff's main selling points. In her spotlight, Kabam is seen saying, stack those bleeds and watch the HP roll in. And you will see the region roll in, often in single digits, low 10s if you're lucky, and maybe a 20 if you land just the luckiest streak of hits. The region feels incredibly overbalanced, the devs felt hesitant to give her anything close to even her own pre-buff regen, simply because her regen is a new mechanic and counts all damage dealt to the opponent. You should also forget about running suicides if you want to have any net positive health after the fight. Her reliance on SP1 or SP2 spamming means recoil will hurt a bunch and your SP3 is completely useless. And the Liquid Courage Poison reduces the already next to non-existent regen to even less. 
The one silver lining about the region, however, is large boss fights with massive HP that either increase your attack by huge amounts or deal large chunks of damage to themselves. Think the Grandmaster or Gwenmaster. The region will definitely feel significant in those fights, but the absolute majority of the game doesn't involve you fighting bosses with millions of HP that also provide benefits to the attacker. Folks smarter than me who have done the math have suggested that the region would need to be around 5% of damage dealt for it to be around the pre-buff number. And to that I say why should her region be around what it was before the buff given that her damage output is nothing significant and her playstyle now requires taking way more parry damage. So Kavan must have heard how much uh, everyone loves parry heavy special champions because guillotine is also one of them now. Parry when you have to, get the opponents in the corner, spam heavies, uh, chain your first hit of the heavy into sp1 or sp2, sp1 is the way to go for overall damage and the sp2 for heal reversal. So now you're dealing about double the damage without synergies compared to the pre-buff state, resulting in fights getting done in about half the time but also taking a whole bunch more damage because of the repeated parries and reparries, all while healing is reduced by more than half compared to the pre-buff state. Of course you can also just play her the same way as you did before the buff without parrying or blocking, but that style actually lands her damage without synergies lower than her pre-buff state, unless if the opponent has a whole bunch of buffs, all thanks to the nerf to her bleed chance. Overall, thanks to the demanding playstyle, her subpar health and block proficiency, and nerfed regen, you hardly ever can actually notice net health gain. You can stay alive thanks to the healing, but recovering from damage is out of the question in most matchups. It's more of the same. Uh, she's got better access to heal reversal utility compared to her synergy-less pre-buff version since souls are easier to build and maintain, but the debuff itself is still very limited. For one, it's still a debuff. Shargers and immune champions can just ignore it. On top of that, champions and those that have immunity to heal modification or reversal can also render it somewhat useless. Now, if the effect was passive and ignored immunity to heal modification, that could have been a nice piece of utility. But I'm honestly just fixating on how this one debuff could have been better, simply because it's the only piece of utility in her entire kit. Putting together what has been covered already in this video, she really needed more in terms of utility, given how overbalanced her damage and sustainability are. This is all the utility she has. Well, technically she has one more thing. The only real new addition to her kit, and it's only really useful on defense. You heard that right? When Hercules was chosen as the new champion vote, his designer, Caban Broccoli, mentioned how he mainly wants Hercules to be played by the players on offense since they voted for him. That line of thinking should really be followed in every voted buff or champion design process. And yet here we are, with the only new piece of Guillotine's kit being defensive. I don't foresee the mechanic being a huge pain on defense either, to be honest, just a minor nuisance if uh, you, know, you don't plan for it, but you can easily plan for this. I previously mentioned how Ant-Man's kit was far more bare bones than Guillotine's, and we're seeing the impact of that directly in this rework. Guillotine largely does the same things as before. She does some of them better, some of them worse, some of them about the same. The only new addition to her kit seems to be a completely redundant and pointless defensive utility. Guillotine admittedly did not need a full rework. She never needed an overhaul. But for some reason, she got picked as a contender by Kabam and voted for by the players. But that did not have to doom her rework. She could have received bumps to damage and sustainability while also getting pieces of utility added to her kit that truly made her feel like a Mystic Champion. 
Yet here we are with this half-baked final product and that's incredibly disappointing. The flaws with this buff feel even more inexcusable considering the recent reduction in champion buff cadence from 3 to 2 per month and especially after the Maz buff fell somewhat flat for a large number of the players and the Gamora buff might as well hadn't have happened at all. I am fully aware that Kabam is short staffed. But putting out a buff like this for a buff vote winner after a cadence reduction is just not okay. I personally didn't vote for her in the process, I honestly didn't really care about the vote after Agent Venom was eliminated. But had I have voted for her, I believe playing her after the buff would have left me disappointed and regretful. All that being said, I'm not gonna just take a steaming dump over the supposed buff without offering some ways to improve it. Guillotine never really felt like a mystic champion. The buff tried to make her feel slightly more mystic by nerfing her chance to bleed on crits and allowing her to increase the chance back to the pre-nerf state if there are buffs on the opponent. And I think that is absolute garbage. So first and foremost, increase the chance to bleed on crits to 100%. Allow her to nullify one buff every time she inflicts a bleed on the opponent. Have the potency of her bleed debuff scale with the number of buffs on the opponent. And have each stack of bleed count as a buff for the rest of her personal abilities. All the mentions of bleed here could be interchangeable with rupture if she's high sig and going against a bleed immune opponent. These changes alone would turn her into a much stronger damage dealer and nullifier, while not giving her too much power via Mr. Dispersion, since bleeds would only count as buffs for her personal abilities. The region, on the other hand, is just much harder to tune, since it's regening based on the damage the opponent is taking. The open-endedness of this ability can lead to broken interactions. It would be much easier to tune it if the region was based on her personal damage. This wasn't my idea either, but it would make a lot more sense. So bump the region to 5-10% to of personal damage dealt. 10% would be enough if her playstyle is left unchanged and her block and health stats don't end up getting a boost. Or the healing can stay at 5% if she gets an alternative to the demanding playstyle. 5% healing would be fine if she could have a 100% chance to refresh all bleed curse debuffs on the opponent when landing her third light hit and if bleed curse debuffs were paused during special attacks. But also a cap of 3 or 4 bleed curse debuffs would need to get added to her kit. This way you can avoid having to repeatedly parry heavy and can actually use the incomplete shortened combo ending in your third light hit to minimize the block damage via backdraft intercepting. But I'm not sure if there's much use in wondering and theory crafting about what could have been and how useful her kit might have ended up being uh, had she actually gotten a full overhaul. Overall, I'm super disappointed in Guillotine's buff. I can't really point to a single reason for this disappointment, to be honest. I wasn't expecting her to be OP or broken or god tier. I just uh, wanted her to be useful. I wanted her to have a place in the roster. That's the least Kabam could have done for a voted champion. I do feel a bit silly for caring this much for a random champion a buff in a mobile game. I have spent dozens of hours testing her, pleading for a rebuff to Kabam, and putting together this review. I hope you all enjoyed watching this video and found it at least somewhat informative. I'd be excited to hear how you all feel about Ni Guillotine after you get your hands on her once you play her in the new patch, which should be out once this video is released. If you enjoy her, please don't let me or anyone else tell you that you're wrong. Thanks all so much for watching, and I'll catch you all later. Boy!